Don't no just die. Then we don't get no peace. Don't no just die. My family and friends, we started the very first one on the 29th of October, which happens to be Brian's birthday. He was the first death from the newly instituted long-handled batons. We buried Brian without his brain. We got his brain three months later and had to have a funeral all over again. From the day that the Windrush landed, there's been institutional and structural racism that has been geared towards keeping down and oppressing the black community in this country. United Families and Friends campaign began as a network of black families because a disproportionate number of black people were dying in police custody. Over the years, it has grown to include families of all ethnicities that die in state custody across the UK. What? gets to me is the fact that I'm still seeing so many new faces. How long have we got to do this before there is a change? I lost my son. Please come. I miss him a lot. Every day in all my life, I have to carry this pain. When I woke up in the morning, in the night, I can't see this. I can't party. I can't listen to you. I left my job in order to fight for the cause. It was a very, very difficult decision as I had cultivated some indescribable relationship with my students. I taught English at secondary school level and only one concept ever brought tears to the innocent and wholesome eyes of my students. When I spoke to them about Grenfell, when I spoke to them about Mark Duggan, when I spoke to them about George Floyd, Words would evade them and their tears would roam free down their cheeks. But little did we all know that a tragedy will leave their teacher who once taught them about the importance of justice, going to fight for justice himself. The police, take it away from me. It was on the 5th of September. It was Monday. After this has had his dinner, he said to me, man, I'm going to see my friends, then I will come back. But this never come back. I'm going to share some stories, two to be more precise, from South Wales. First of all, last year, in January 2021, a Somali brother named Mahmoud Hussein got arrested by the police, put in the back of the van, straight away into the police station, stayed overnight. Released him the next day with no charge, but he was battered black and blue. He went to his auntie's house and he looked at said, I am broken. I want to go to sleep. Sadly, Mahmoud Hussein never woke up again. The 17th of February 2021, my brother, Mu'ayyad Bashir, a 29 year old man, suffered from a mental health episode that morning. My parents, Called 999, asking for the ambulance. First thing, the police turned up to the place. Muyed was so scared for his life, he barricaded himself in the bedroom because he knew the police were coming. My brother was expecting paramedics in green uniform. They restrained Muyed by his legs, handcuffed him, and it was too late. I had to move back, stay in my brother's bedroom where everything happened. It took a mental toll on us. So that he died on the June 4th, 2022. He fell into the river tapes after tasers were deployed on him multiple times by metropolitan police officers. On that fateful day, he was vulnerable in mental health crisis. He needed support and medical intervention, but was instead met with brutal, brutal excessive force. It met police, led us, and the public to believe that he was holding a screwdriver, when in fact he was only a mere firelighter. Mark Cole, Taser for 33 seconds. Darian Atkinson, Darren Combabach, the Taser him, beat him with a baton. An officer punched him 15 to 20 times in the face. He died three days after in hospital. Adrian McDonald's was tasered for 25 seconds while a dog was biting him at the same time. Adrian couldn't walk. He had to go down the stairs on his bottom. He begged for help. They dragged him to the police van. 
He said, I can't breathe. Help me. He's going to die in the back of the police van. We had an inquest. The officers were found guilty of not giving Adrian the help he deserved. A month after, they overturned it and they walk away free. When Christopher died on that custody suite floor with his trousers down, the police officers stood around making monkey and chimpanzee noises, I honestly believed there was enough evidence there to take these police officers to court. They promised, when we got to the European Court of Human Rights, that this wouldn't happen again. All these promises are false. Now, I believed I buried my brother in 2000. Until they told us that my brother was found in 2011, 11 years later, hidden in six body bags, we buried a 77-year-old woman. They hid him. They were using his body all those years for training purposes. Training, training police officers, mocking, laughing. I've been doing this for 30 years on the 27th of November next month. My twin was taken into custody at Manchester and six days later I was found dead in a cell. The narrative that was put out was that he died of a drug overdose. The first inquest got stopped because the custody sergeant's wife was on the jury. The second inquest, they still continued with he died of a drug overdose. I managed to get DNA samples sent down to London to be tested, and it came back that the samples they were using did belong to somebody who died of a drug overdose, but it wasn't Leon's. The toxicologist for the Home Office had no choice but to stand up and say, I feel I should make it known to the court. I falsified the evidence by putting this man's name to somebody else's samples. Nothing happened to him. In fact, the coroner turned around and said that must have been a very difficult thing for me. Police are the murderers. We've actually had six people killed by police in the London borough of Harringay. Cynthia Jarrett in 1985, Joy Gardner 1991, Roger Sylvester 1999. This is Carol Duggan. They murdered her nephew 2011. When Mark Duggan was killed, he got out of that car, and let's be right, Mark was doing something wrong. But that's what prisons are built for. He got out of that car, and in 1.5 seconds, they murdered him. They murdered Jermaine Baker, 2015. Jermaine Baker didn't get out of the car. Jermaine Baker was shot through his wrist, which meant he had his hands up. And Jermaine was doing something wrong too. They should have and could have arrested him and imprisoned him because that's what prisons were made for. But they murdered him, Lamont Roper. They chased him and pushed him into a river. My 17-year-old son in 2015, in his moment of need, in his psychosis, he was chased by the territorial support group. Thugs, police thugs, who had him killed. They chased him into a corner and he fell into the river. And then they held back the crowd to stop anyone from saving his life. It took him six minutes to die. In my son's inquest, the jury gave a verdict of accidental death. I'm the third sister of Sheku Bayo. Sheku died in police custody seven years ago. We still fight for justice for Sheku. I'm just going to keep my shot because I can't do it. I wanted Adama to speak so you could hear from the heart how the family is still hurting. I'm sure you would have heard this stereotypical thing of the big black man. Asha Kubayo, big black man, was barely 12 stone. Yet there were two policemen who sat on him who were over 20 stone. Our public inquiry starts again on the 22nd of November. At least we fought for it to be transparent. Everything that happens is recorded and it's on YouTube. Remember Shaney. He died in 2010, restrained by 11 police officers while a voluntary patient in a mental health ward while the nurses and doctors watched. But we got Shaney's law on the statute books. Make sure that if there's a mental health unit in your area, that they are complying and applying Shaney's law. Because they're not. They don't want to, but it's the law.
we also have to carry in our hearts those that have died within the mental health units and secure units. It's not just at the hands of the police, it's the hands of the state. Mental health services across our nation are failing, and they are failing too many every day. My son went into state care November 2012, and within seven days he was dead. And nobody has been held to account. He had needle wounds in his groin, he'd cried rape, he'd been highly medicated, he had bruises above his ankles. I then met another parent, and another, and another. And now I stand with 93 families. We're fighting for a statutory public inquiry into Essex Mental Health Services. We raised 106,000 signatures on a petition. We've been given an independent inquiry, which has no independence. It has no powers to compel witnesses under oath, so we're asking the government to change it, to give it the statutory powers so we can get staff in under oath, defibrillate the system, find out exactly what's been going wrong. The inquiry that is running has already uncovered 1,500 deaths, 900 of which they have no information as to how these people died. The care of chance of prisoners under mental health was run by the Essex Mental Health Trust. Chelmsford Prison has the highest suicide rate in the country. What do we want? Justice! Justice. When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! The lies that the families get told adds to the abuse they've already been through. And they know this. They know exactly what they're doing. All they learn from these cases, each case, is how to cover up again and again and again. Police have no mercy. They do not care because they think that they're going to get away with murder. And that's what it is, murder. Jermaine Baker, there was a homicide investigation. The IPCC, when they saw what this copper did, wanted him charged. And the IPCC were toothless. The IOPC, who came after them, wanted the murderer charged. And they're toothless. The murder of Jermaine Baker was so convinced he was going to go to prison that he ran away. And the police had to go and bring him back and tell him, say, yo, you're safe. Don't worry, we'll protect you. At the very beginning, when they murdered Mark, the IPCC told us that it was an open and shut case. There was witnesses, police witnesses, to say that they saw an officer throw the gun okay. over the fence. Yes. Yes. OK? Yes. So it was an open and shut case. I decided to take on the campaign from, I live in Manchester. I took it on thinking it's going to be for six months. How long was it in Stafford? Uh, yes. They all work together and they lie. Do not trust not one of them. They're going to drag this out for years and tear your family apart like they've done to mine and to other families. We have to stay together. We have to stay strong. Those who organise this event, Marcia, I'm your confident, Mike. I want to give you my the maximum support. A maximum love. And next time, everyone come, bring someone. And I honestly believe the more of us, we can take them down. Because I believe in the power of the people. The power of the people is greater than the people in power. These people will carry you through. We will all try and carry you through. No justice! 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 No